everybody to a brand new video in my room with the worst lighting ever apparently because today is a very gloomy day but what better day than a perfect gloomy day to do some bookish stuff so i'm gonna tell you i mean you've you've seen some stuff already right but i'm gonna tell you what we're doing today i need to rearrange some things on my shelves they are a mess i have some piles of books randomly where they don't belong because they either got here or I used them for videos and didn't put them back. They're all around. Then we have the other shelf that needs help. This shelf is the absolute worst thing in the world. It needs so much help. Other than organizing, we also have to pick out a TBR for June. I already have some books in mind, so I'm not going to do the randomizer thing. I'm just going to pick out books that I've been wanting to read and that kind of fit into June, aka Pride Month, which I'm very excited for. And then the last thing on the agenda is this little guy. My reading journal. I did my May cover spread, like that one is done, but I still need to fill in some books that I read and like do the little artwork for each and every book because <laughs> I forgot. We're gonna do a little bit of an arts and crafts, we're gonna do a little cleanup. We're just overall gonna do all things bookish and also like I'm gonna take you along. We're gonna read a little bit but I'm not sure we're gonna read that much today. And we're just gonna start with the book journal just because I need more natural light for this even though there is there isn't really any natural light outside because it is literally raining. But who cares? We're doing it anyway. Hi, and welcome to my desk. I cleaned it for you, but we don't like this angle because I, I actually, I have this thing. I have a camera arm. Let's switch to this perspective and show you what we're dealing with in the reading journal. In case you haven't seen it, I made an entire video on how I initially set up this reading journal. So if you want to see that, I'm going to link that for you. But for now, we're just going to go in. I'm just going to show you a few things and then we're going to just like get started because I need to do things. <laughs> I'm still extremely proud of this cover page. I think it looks amazing and nobody can tell me otherwise. It's just so cute, so gorgeous. March is done pretty much except for a few drawings that still need to be drawn. But other than that, I think March is pretty much it. What we need to focus on mostly is April, the cover spread that still needs to be done. I want, I want one. Also, like the few leftover reviews that I still need to do. And then for May, I need to up update this. Yes, I know, this is bothering me so much. I picked the wrong one to draw this line and I'm so angry at myself for it. And then we need to finish all of the reviews for this month, which should be fun. But yeah, and then we're also gonna have to do the June one and pick a theme for June, which I'm excited for. So I think it's time to start. As you can see, for the month of April, I decided to go with Weather Girl. I always pick a book as the theme for the month and then I base the entire thing off of that book. So I had decided to go with Weather Girl, I just wasn't sure what to draw and I just ended up with covering the cover essentially because I love it so much with the umbrella, the yellow. I After that I realized that I don't actually have the colors to go with that so once I do color this in I will actually be going with like pastels. And then on the left I just drew an old TV. Don't ask me why I went with an old TV and not an actual modern TV, but who knows. And then I always write one quote on this page, and for this one I went with, For everyone searching for light in the dark, you deserve every good thing. That is the dedication in the book, and I thought it was very, very beautiful. This book focuses a lot on depression and mental health, so it's only fitting, and April is always a very rainy month, and you just gotta find the good, and you just gotta know that you deserve the best and I felt like that was a very very cute dedication so I just went with it. After finishing this cover page I decided to catch up on some of the reviews so I'm gonna leave you with a little bit of a time lapse of me writing my tiny little reviews. Just again be warned there might be some tiny spoilers in there if you really read the text but if you don't want any spoilers just don't read it just look at the pictures I'm drawing they're all so cute. Another rainy afternoon I don't know what I'm to do I just miss you more than anything It's 
way too quiet in the house I'm just wasted on the couch Cause I don't wanna feel anything Wish you'd stay Stay here beside me This isn't how it's supposed to be Wish you'd stay Can't shake the feeling that we said goodbye too soon. So for June, I decided to go with the only thing that felt right for me for June, and that was Heartstopper. I grabbed my Heartstopper yearbook and I just drew this picture that I love so, so much of Nick and Charlie at the Pride Parade, like at the CSD with the little Pride flag and the backpacking and it's just the cutest ever. Like, I did my best, okay? I'm not claiming this is perfect, but to me, it's enough and I like it and it's cute and I'm just, I'm happy with how it turned out. It's more of a little doodle. You can also tell that I do not have any interest in drawing feet because I just don't like doing it. And that is why they don't have feet. But this is my journal and I just don't like drawing feet. That's it, that's all, that's the entire reasoning behind it. And then for the quote of the month, I went, why are straight people like this? And I just, I love this. This is from the second Heartstopper, by the way. It's just so much fun. And I just decided to leave the shirts blank because I just didn't care enough, okay? I didn't care. And then I just did my usual layout for the rest of it. So we got the TBR page and we got like all the statistics that I do at track every single month. For example, like books read, books bought, and then all my social media statistics right at the bottom that you're gonna see in a bit. And yeah, I just, it, I will probably be adding some little doodles and drawings throughout the month when I am having like a creative moment. But for now, I'm just gonna leave it very blank, very clean, and then, like, with potential to be doodled upon. But yeah, that's it. All right, I would say I am pretty much done with this. I also put my hand brace back on because after all this writing and drawing, my hand hurts so much. So the biggest parts of what I did were the cover pages that you saw me do, but I'm gonna show them to you again, just because I think they turned out so, so cute. So obviously we have the April cover page. I knew that I wanted to do something related to Weather Girl. I just didn't know how to do it yet. So I just decided to essentially co like copy the cover. And then I just kind of finished all of my stuff that I was gonna write and I finished every single one. I didn't do the drawing for this one yet, but at least that's done. So we're completely done with April now, which is a good thing. I dragged that out for way too long. And then for May, I didn't have to do a lot for May, like the cover page was already done, but I did have to write a few of the reviews, so I did that as well. And now comes the June cover page, which I'm kind of proud of. I tried to copy the Alice Oseman thing that she did. It's This is obviously a lot better, um, but I, did, I tried my best. I didn't want to do too much color, so I just left them pretty plain. I then also started making this page and I did the June TBR in there. Just, this is how it starts. And then I add more to it during the month. I think with that, we can close the reading journal for now. We can put it aside. All right, let me give you a rundown of all the books I've chosen for this month's TBR. Spoiler alert, they're all queer. The chances of me actually reading these books are pretty slim because I never stick to my TBR. I just cannot do it, but I am trying my best. And if I only read one or two of these books, we're fine. Also, did I pick seven because that fits perfectly with my layout for my book journal? Yes. Yes, I did. So, let's just go through them really quick. All right, the first book I've chosen is Sorry Bro. So we have our main character who is proposed to in San Francisco, but I think that she like says no to her boyfriend and she's like, I don't want that. So she starts traveling and she has this travel guide and they, they kind of like start a little thing 
But the only issue is that our main character here, she is not out as a bisexual, so it's very hard for her and her traditional family, I think. I think that's kind of what this is about. It sounds great, it sounds like a cute plotline. It sounds like an easy, comfortable read, so I'm here for this. The next one is The Charm Offensive. I have been talking about reading this book for what seems like years. I think it's been like two years since this book has been on my shelf and I have not touched it. I bought it originally because I know that there's an asexual or at least demisexual character in this book and I don't know which one of the two it is, but it's also two guys falling in love in a dating show on TV and it's kind of cute, I think. I I'm pretty sure that it's gonna be cute. I think that one of them works for the TV show and the other one is a contestant at the TV show. So I have high hopes. I kind of love TV show romances, but like in books, not on TV. I hate watching like dating shows, but I love reading about them. I don't know why. Probably because it's less secondhand embarrassment for me and also less PDA to watch. Next up, we're moving into kind of an historical fiction with a little bit of magic, I think. And we have Gwen and Art are not in love. This is kind of a queer Guinevere and Arthur retelling, you know, like King Arthur with like Excalibur, that King Arthur. So Gwen and Art are supposed to be married. Like the, the, they've been betrothed to one another for years and they're supposed to get married, but they don't want that. They really, really don't want that because Arthur falls in love with one of the stable boys and Gwen falls in love with her lady's mate. It's so good. I think, I'm not sure, but it's a, it just sounds so cute. And I just, I, I want this. I, I love this time period. I love everything that's in the past, essentially, as long as I don't have to live in it. So we're reading Gwen and Arden on Love. Next up, we have The Sun Bearer Trials by Aidan Thomas. I don't know how queer this book is. All I know is that the author is queer and trans, so I think that counts. I've loved Cemetery Boys. It was one of my like five-star reads. It was so, so good. And I don't necessarily know what this one's about, but I'm gonna look it up for you. So as I was expecting, the main character in this is trans again, which I love. I, I, I don't have enough books with trans characters in them. I just, I don't. So we have our main character and, sorry, let me, let me look up the pronouns again. So we have our main character and he is not really worried. There are these sun bearer trials that happen and the winner gets like a prize and the loser of the sun bearer trials gets the greatest honor of all because he will be sacrificed. Now we have our main character he is the son of the goddess of birds, as far as I understand this. Oh, so he and his best friend have to compete in this magical trial, and they're just scared because it might be that one of them will be sacrificed to the sun, and that's just... It sounds good. It sounds cute. I'm excited to read this. It's, it's got, like, a little bit of magic, but also not too much magic. I mean, technically they're gods, right? So I think it's a lot of magic, but... I love Cemetery Boys, so I'm definitely going to enjoy this as well. I'm j I just know it. Next up, we have All That's Left in the World. This is, as far as I know, an apocalypse story with a gay couple and a gay romance. <laughs> what, what better book can you write? I personally love apocalypse stories. My favorite movies of all time are like doomsday movies, like The Day After Tomorrow. I wish I had more books that had like a doomsday kind of vibe and I'm kind of getting the feeling that this is giving me this. So we're following Jamie and Andrew who are strangers but they're also the two last people left alive. What? <sighs> it sounds so good. It sounds good. I'm excited to read this and I'm excited to tell you all about it once I do. The next one is a fantasy, and it is The Witch and the Vampire. This is a queer Rapunzel retelling with witches and vampires. And that just sounds great as a concept. The cover art is absolutely stunning, like, it's just gorgeous. So we have witches and vampires, and the vampires are the bad guys, but one of those witches was turned into a vampire. But she still has some witchy powers left, and now she needs to hide somewhere in a tower, and she's locked up in there, and her 
best friend and also like potential love interest has to break her out of this tower. Is it just me or does queer romance just make you happy? Then again, romance in general makes me happy as long as it's not my own romance. Moving on to the last book, which is Last Night at the Telegraph Club. We have another sapphic romance, but this one is set in Chinatown. Let me check on the year. 1954, where two girls falling in love isn't exactly the safest thing to do. The Telegraph Club is a lesbian bar that they go to, apparently. I'm just excited for this one. I've had it on my shelf for ages. Yeah, this is the Illumicrate special edition of the book. I got these in a bundle. This second book, well, they're not really connected, but I got a second book as well. Um, I've been pushing this off because for the longest time I thought this was general fiction until I realized that this is actually just a little bit of an historic romance situation and I'm totally here for it. So I'm ready for this book and all the others. Welcome to my tiny mess. It's not the biggest mess on this shelf. Like as far as mess goes, I've seen bigger messes, but we still have to clean it up. <coughs> Whoopsie. So I got two romances here. I have Hate Mail and I have Night Shift, which both got here like last week and I had no idea where to put them. So I just put them on the shelf and yeah, that's just not the best idea. So we're gonna have to put them somewhere else. For now, I'm just gonna pile these up and I'm probably gonna put these on the TBR card, like on the lower level of the TBR card, just to be sure because I have all my unread romance on there, so we're just gonna put them there as well. And then with these, I don't have space. Okay, my, my romance shelf, we're gonna get to that soon. Technically, these are also unread. Like, no, Addicted to You, I've read this one. I just haven't read Kiss the Sky. So I'm not entirely sure where to put this because I don't have space. I'm just gonna, I mean, we're gonna do that shelf later anyway because it's a mess, so. Yeah, I'm just gonna put it over there and deal with it in a minute. And then for these, like I've read all these. These belong back there. I think I can fit them. Come with me. We're in the corner. This is technically where Flawless will go. So I'm just gonna put this in. This has been bothering me for a while. We're just gonna change this. I put them in the wrong way because they were like laying this way. So. That way would, be, would have been correct, but now I have to change the order of them because I don't have space for that anymore. So these two, Dawn and Dusted and Swift and Saddled, also have to go in on this shelf. Like I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put them there. I'm not sure if I've told you before, but I'm gonna be moving in like about a month, like within this house. I'm just gonna be moving into a slightly bigger room, or I can fit more bookshelves. Yes, I am moving purely because of my bookshelf situation. But anyway, I only have Love Light Farms left and that can just go with the other Christmas books in the back. Don't ask me why I have seashells laying there when it's Christmas, but we don't talk about things like that. We don't. We don't. Also, can we appreciate the fact that I put makeup on this morning? What? I did. I'm kind of proud of myself. I'm not very good at makeup. All right, in the last book, wait, let me, let me kneel down on the floor. Ouch. The last book I have left is this one, the book that broke the world. This is the second book in this series and I just finished reading the book that wouldn't burn like four days ago. It was super, super fun. So I'm just gonna scoot everything over in here. I think that should be possible and just squeeze it in right there. I love when things work out the way that you planned them to. What's the point in having a TBR cart that you can roll when you have carpet on your floor and you cannot roll it because it's too heavy? I don't know. So, this is the TBR cart. We have books on here that I'm not going to have on here anymore because I've not read them in the past two months, so I'm probably not gonna read them this month. And if I do, I will just pick them on my shelf. So, let's clean out this top shelf and just ignore everything. Like, this is a mess. It's a mess. We're fine. We're okay. So, just a little bit of a rundown of the shelf. 
This is a pile of Taylor Swift stickers. I don't know why I have them there. I just ordered them and I put them there and I ignored them. And this is where I store all of my post-it notes and tabs. They're just there. And this is a box so that I have something heavy in the back. These are my beading stuff for making friendship bracelets. On this top shelf to hide the mess, we're gonna put all the books that I just picked out for this month. Here we are. Bum, bum, bum. So, this is the only really big book that I have. I like putting books in here. I, I love the way that the book cart looks. It's kind of a mess. It's always been a mess. This is looking horrendous with this box, so I'm thinking of just taking her out. Oh no. See, this is why I have this there. Because the cart is front heavy. No, you're going back there. All right, I'm sorry, this is unfortunate. I have so many books in here that the cart is just leaning to the front constantly. It could fall over any second. I probably shouldn't have so many hardcovers down here that are super heavy. If I had less books on here, I think it would look nicer in general. I want some kind of organization here, but I just don't have that. We're gonna make a fantasy shelf right here with some fantasy TBR books and nobody can stop me. Mostly because I don't have space for any of these books on my actual shelf. But we're just gonna ignore that. I don't have much space. Like, look at this down here. Like, that's the romance section. And I don't have a lot of space to put more books in there, but I think I can fit the ones that I talked to you about earlier. I'm just gonna put them in again. The thing is that for most of these books, I don't have any space on my shelf for these. Like, Five Survive, I hate you. Not the... Ah! I hate it when books fall over. It's the worst thing in the world because it makes me so anxious. Let's move me up again. I don't even know what to put on this book card. I'm just gonna go with Tempest of Tea. I've been wanting to read this one, so I'm just gonna put it on there in the hopes that I will. Then we also have What the River Knows. I've been wanting to read this for a while because it focuses on Egyptian gods and goddesses, and I love that. I love Egyptian mythology. So I'm gonna put both of these on here as well. I mean, they've been on here before, so it's not that big of a surprise, but it's just what's going to happen. And I think I'm just gonna put the books that were on here before on there again, because these are books that I've been meaning to read for a while and I've just never gotten around to reading them because I just didn't. And I think that's that's it for now with the book card. It looks not, it, like this doesn't look good, but I'm still hoping to find something that looks kind of cute where I can put all of those post-it notes in. Like, I just, I just need something, something that's cute. Other than that, I think it's time to carry all of this back over. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. That kind of works. Watch me work my magic, okay? You have a book, but you have two copies of said book. Here's what you do. You take the book, you put the other one behind it, you push it. You hide it and nobody knows that you have an issue. Yay! Let's put the other books on the shelves. So, this is the shelf I was talking about. It is a mess. Purely a mess. I just stuff books in there and that's that. I don't like doing it, but it's the only thing I can do because I have a space shortage. And I don't actually know what to do. I don't know how to stop that. Obviously, I could make it better by... Like, obviously, it's gonna be better in a month when I'm moving, but I'm just... I want to clean stuff up because this is a no-go situation. There are empty plates and like kind of full plates and empty bottles some dishes it's just a mess down here and then there's coke cans and fanta cans so let's go and do something with these shelves because i am stressed by them
lot better just because this shelf is cleared. But now we get to the book situation. And for that, I think you need to come closer. It's a mess. I know it's a mess, but there's no space. Like this book is standing there because it doesn't have any spot. There is no space for it. Just no space. What do I do? I found space. I'm just... I hate myself for this, okay? But I'm just gonna... Put them back there. This is not what I originally set out to do, but I am just now realizing that I cannot do anything against it because I don't have any space. The issue is, I have created a bigger chaos than I had before. That is one of my greatest skills. Alrighty, now that I am mostly done with cleaning my room, like, it looks presentable again. The bookshelf is still an eyesore, but it's behind the door. Nobody ever sees that bookshelf. People are surprised when they come into my room and they're like, wow, you've got a big bookshelf. And then I'm like, yeah, there is another big bookshelf behind the door. What we're doing now is just chill. I am being calm, chill, and I'm reading. So, in case you're wondering, the book I'm reading right now is American Royals. I've been planning on reading this for so long. It is actually a book that was on my TBR for me, so I'm kind of glad that I'm finally getting to it. What we have here is a world where America, or the United States of America, is a kingdom. So George Washington was voted first king of the United States. We are following the American royal family. Specifically, we're following the teenagers in this royal family which are Beatrice, Samantha, and Jefferson? Jeffrey? Jeff. His name is Jeff. I'm currently about 66 pages into this book. With Beatrice, she is kind of in love with her bodyguard. And then you have Samantha, who just doesn't really like people, and she is kind of like, I think, going for her brother's best friend. And then you have Prince Jefferson, who has kind of a love triangle going on, I think. He kind of has two girls and he's got to decide, but he can't decide between the two. I think that's kind of all you need to know and all I know at this point. I will read now and it's gonna be fun. a lot later it's it's actually a lot later like it's there has been a thunderstorm and now the thunderstorm is gone again like that much later it, it's like it, it's been a while okay it's been a while um i'm now 160 pages into the book i have to say it's very fun although there's a lot of drama like if you're really really looking for drama this series has got you covered i have decided that i'm gonna just continue reading for the rest of the evening but I will not be taking you along with it. However, I will tell you all about this book in the next video, which will be my wrap up for this month. So if you wanna know my opinions, my final thoughts on this book, you can check that out on Tuesday. As always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like. And if you wanna see more of me reading books and just hanging out with you guys, consider subscribing if you don't already. And I will see you for the next video that I make. Bye, everybody! By the way, I, I cheated a little bit, and um, I'm just gonna show you this now. Like, I still have a few things to fill out here. There is, like, technically, there's two more books that need to go here, and then the book I'm reading now needs to go there, but I just couldn't be bothered to do it anymore. I just couldn't. Anyway, I hope you have an awesome rest of the day. Go pick up a book. I will see you soon. Bye!